as a church family here at CHBC. Hello, I am Dr. Adil De Torres, the lead pastor of Carpenter's House Baptist Church here at the city of Santa Rosa, Laguna. We would love for you to join us in one of our services focused on building your faith, your family, and becoming your friends. It is our joy and privilege to be part of your life's journey and become your spiritual family. If you are looking for a spiritual home, then we pray we can welcome you home. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon here. Welcome to Carpenter's House Baptist Church. This is Sister Janelle Lirio. You are now watching CHBC online service. To our first-time guests, second- and third-time guests, we encourage you to fill out our connection card. More than this, we consider you as friend of this church. To our CHBC members, please fill out our attendance form. This July, we have a new preaching series, Who Are You? Your Identity in Christ, every Sundays at 9 a.m. And we are now back at our Wednesday church service. Please stay tuned for more details. Church, we are excited to celebrate our 15th church anniversary. This year, at Thanksgiving, our praises and worship to our Lord Jesus Christ. A homecoming, dedication, and meeting new friends are only few that we are looking forward to. We are cordially inviting you for this August 2021. Do not forget to like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow our Instagram account at CHBC Official. You can share, tag your family and friends with you in our live streaming. 
with your Bible and smile! Good evening po sa inyo lahat. Welcome to our church tonight. It's our prayer time. I'm glad that you're joining us in person and on live. And we want to start with you on time. And we thank you for being with us. Stand together as we start. Those of you in your homes, we expect that you join us and worship up. Those of you on the way, we are thankful that we are joining us on time tonight for a very important service. And that is as we come together in prayer. Let's sing that song together wherever you are. See that song? There's a happy land of promise. Everybody will be happy over there, brother Tabs. Amen. Let's sing it loud and clear in the first verse now. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the Savior first shall soon the glory share. 
Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Sing the chorus now. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We'll sing his praises to the never ending age. Everybody will be happy over there. Fathers, fathers, sisters, brothers will be singing round the throne in the land where no one ever knows a care. It's now. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises to the never ending hymn. Everybody will be happy over there. We will hear nobody praying in the morning in the land. For no burdens there will be for us to bear. People will be singing glory, glory to the Lamb. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises to the never ending. Everybody will be happy over there. With the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace And who brought us to that land so bright and fair We will praise his name forever as we look upon his face Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there we will shout and sing His praises through the never ending Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises through the never ending Everybody will be happy over there. 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 Well, hey amen. I know it's Wednesday night. Uh, the fact that I'm going to Moses, I, I'm hardly trying to sing. And we just came out of Sunday and. And uh, we are trying to uh, get used again back to Wednesday night. This is our second Wednesday night in person after more than two years. And I know most of you are still in your homes and some are still coming right now. And we want to start on time. In my clock, it's already quarter to seven. This is Wednesday night prayer time. We would like to devote more time in prayer. And as we are getting more people to come and uh, getting up and, and as you are staying there and listening, let's repeat that sound because uh, we're trying to get that. I hope that we got the piano uh, with us in the sound. I hope our mics are all doing well. And uh, we're gonna sing that song. Let's sing that song at the the last verse. Okay, let's try the last verse. Most of you, pinanono uh, tapu yung choir sa kanyang worship team. I like you to sing, okay? And if you're happy tonight, lift your voice and let's sing that song. There will never meet the one who saved us and who kept us by His grace, and we will all be happy over there. Well, let's sing that song again. In the last verse now, everyone loud and clear. There will meet the one who saved us and who kept us by His grace and who brought us to the land so bright and fair. And we will praise His name forever as we look upon His face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises to the never-ending angels. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises to the never-ending angels. 
Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there. Let's pray, Father, tonight. We are thankful to be back in church. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to uh, have our on online and at the same time, Panginoon, tonight, especially our in person service. Lord, thank you for the faithfulness of our dear people joining us tonight. We thank the Lord for our choir, our worship team, our instrumentalists, our ushers, our media people, those that are serving Panginoon. I ask that you be with those still coming on their way from their work, uh, on, on the road. And I pray tonight, Pan, once again, allow our church once again to realize that, Lord, this service is not just another service. Uh, this service is not supplemental to our Christian life. This service is fundamental to our Christian life. And I pray tonight as we come, not just to hear the word of God, but Lord, tonight to be able to intercede and pray and Lord, bring not just personal needs, but Lord, our church, our ministries, our people. And Lord, we ask for your power, for your guidance, for your blessings. And I pray tonight to just prepare our hearts and allow us to worship with these songs. I pray that every song we sing bring us closer to heaven. I pray, Panginoon, that everything we do allow us, Panginoon, to and, and, and fulfills your purpose in our life. And I pray tonight once again, may we hear from heaven. May we be able, Lord, to see souls saved and another life challenged and changed. And Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ preached. And Lord, your people, Panginoon, growing, strengthened in faith and in prayer. So we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Remain standing. Let's sing that song when we all get to heaven. Amen. Praise God. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and pleasant, He'll prepare for us a place. Now when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Tonight, and I'm glad to be back in church. I'm glad that you're here in church. It's Wednesday night, 
We're going to pray and prepare our hearts to listen to the Word of God tonight as we uh, be encouraged with uh, the prayer, our prayer life. And uh, later on tonight, we'll be again going to our uh, divided services. But I'm thankful that you are here and we are joining. Thank you for our faithfulness of our people in front. And uh, I appreciate that. I believe, Mother Pudet, that every time we, we lead in church, we must lead our people in everything. And I am thankful for our leaders, our builders joining us tonight. Let's pray and prepare our hearts for the message as we come to the Lord tonight. Father, like in on, we are thankful that in the middle of the week, we could find a place Panginoon, that we could once again carry our burdens and leave it here. Lord, although we are pressed on with many things in life, and Lord, there are times that we face things we don't expect, and maybe, Lord, it robs us of the joy and allows us for a moment to forget who we are and why we're here. And I pray tonight, Panginoon, and that we realize how blessed we are to have a time in the middle of the week to be recharged, be refreshed, be able, Panginoon, to unburden ourselves and bring it to the foot of the cross and Lord our hearts are lifted tonight and maybe our bodies are weary from work from the things that we have uh, been doing in life to be able to provide to our homes our families our needs yet Panginoon we know that the greatest need we have is not just material it's spiritual Lord tonight in our weakness we are thankful that you are our strength Lord, I thank you for the voice that we have that we could sing. Thank you for a place that we could gather and lift your name and Panginoon worship you. Thankful to see our children whose families come and pray. And I pray once again as we begin to prepare our hearts for the message tonight. Begin to prepare ourselves to be a blessing to our church. Someone needs Panginoon as we pray for them in our divided sessions later on. Again, for those watching, maybe they have tuned in, or they have browsed through us, you know, and then, Lord, they're watching right now. I pray you save someone there. May they realize tonight we are not here for a religion. But Lord, we are here, Panginoon, because we have a personal relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And each day we worship, and each time we come together to pray, Lord, we're coming to our greatest and our dearest friend, our Savior, our Lord. And I pray tonight as we listen to this song, once again, minister to our hearts. Allow us to be focused. Allow us to be able to be lifted with our burdens. And just come as we are. As you speak to us, to this song, and to the word of God. We ask, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated as you listen to this song.
Hallelujah. Uh, what a great truth, Mother Buddha. Uh, in Jesus, we are safe evermore. And I love that. And uh, before I preach tonight, let me give this announcement. I forgot to do that. Uh, many things going on in my mind tonight as we are, uh, uh, you know, doing a lot of things. But let me make this very quick uh, before I preach. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a short preaching, but I, I, I pray and I believe it's going to be a powerful preaching tonight. But don't miss this, Mother Buddha. Uh, this coming Sunday is the last Sunday that uh, we're preaching on that series. And not really last Sunday, Who Are You? And uh, uh, the next, the following Sunday uh, is our Revival Sunday. And on that 25th of the Sunday, uh, it is our Revival and First Fruits Offering. So those of you in your homes that have not yet been in church, na dalawang taon, mga kapatid, baka mag-rapture, abutin kayo ng Panginoon sa bahay nyo, abutin kayo ng church, okay? And then so, but this coming last Sunday, let me encourage all of you to come to church. We have Pastor, a good friend of mine, Pastor Chody Marquez, is preaching for us. It's going to be a blessing. Uh, this will be just his second time to preach. The first time was in 2019. And that's his first time in the ground floor. But I, I, I know it will be a blessing to us. We'll be preaching at the 9 o'clock service and at the 4 o'clock service in the afternoon. Invite your friends, bring your family, be here in church. And... Uh, uh, I, uh, I'll tell you what, Tagalog yan, Tagalog. He's gonna preach Tagalog, you know, uh, from Chaung Keson, a good friend. So please uh, have that in mind and bring your family and let's just be faithful and, and give towards our first fruits and be revived. But at the same time, that last Sunday would be our moving up and recognition Sunday. Again, let me say that this coming Sunday is the deadline of uh, all our church family to register with our receptionists, our media people, mga kapatid, if you have graduated and uh, if you uh, are a top three in your class, let us know so that we could prepare and there'll be a very special service for you. We're going to recognize you, uh, encourage you to be a great testimony while you study and please do that. Uh, we're going to have a great time. But at the same time, we're going to recognize and honor our very own uh, uh, ch children in our Christian school. And I think we, got, we have three... Uh, that has moved up and uh, two have graduated and uh, so I, I like to recognize them that's part of our family it's something that we want Makaputit, to highlight as our ministry we are praying for these kids uh, we want them to grow uh, spiritually and uh, in many things so that they'll, they'll be a blessing so don't miss that it's coming Sunday and for those of our uh, kids graduating in our church uh, they'll, be ha they'll have another special you know a, a, a token from the, the pastor and so don't miss that and uh, it was going to be a great time this coming last Sunday of July 25. Now that being said, mga kapatid, we have only barely uh, four weeks to make a miracle in, in our entire facility. And mga kapatid, if you're praying for a miracle, say amen. And I am, and I hope you are. And we're not just praying, we're preparing, we're planning to do that. It's our 15th year anniversary as Carpenters Baptist Church. It's going to be a full pack August. On August 15, that's our kickoff. At the morning at 9 o'clock, we'll have Dr. Ed Lorena preach for us. On the afternoon, we're going to have uh, Pastor Alex Ocampo preach for us. On that 18th is our Lord's Supper church. This is just once a year. We do not do it, we do not do it online. I believe Dr. Lee Malaputin, uh, you need to come. There are only two ordinances that the Lord left to his church. Baptism, Lord's Supper. That's a special ordinance. And uh, it's not something the Lord left so that we could just be able, mga kapatid, to, you know, skip by and uh, not give importance. So it's a Wednesday night. We will have a special service there. You ought to be here. Members of our church family, uh, I want you to be here. And uh, we'll be able to observe that it's a great time to rededicate ourselves to the Lord and rededicate ourselves to His church. The reason why He gave that ordinance to His local church. Not to an individual, uh, not to uh, just one Christian, it's given to the church. And so as a church, we're going to observe that on the 18th. You ought to be here. Don't be late. If you're coming from Manila on a Wednesday night, I encourage you, take a leave. Uh, you know, uh, be early off. Tell your boss that it's a very important time in your Christian life and in your faith to be here on August 18th. And also on the 22nd, that's our second Sunday of anniversary. We have in the morning for the first time, uh, Bishop, Bishop Fernand Cruz, uh, the father of Pastor Jacob Cruz, uh, we would like to pray for Pastor Jacob Cruz, his wife, Johnny, 
uh, uh, they have been I don't know if uh, I think it's public but uh, I just they're good friends we want to pray for them they were tested positive uh, this week and uh, we're I, I know they're they're doing fine I think Joni is in the hospital Pastor Jacob Cruz wife and so we would like to know that we're praying for them and uh, we, we uh, love them and uh, they have been a part of us so I know uh, that God's going to uh, make them well so but his father Pastor Fernand Cruz will be with us on the 22nd and on the afternoon but we're gonna have Pastor Dante Norzabal the pastor of Tayabas Bible Baptist Church our hometown will be with us preaching okay and on the 25th we'll have on Wednesday night then on that week it will be moved on the Friday okay because it's gonna be our I think 13th gospel expansion conference and uh, we have for the first time our guest speaker Pastor Arnel Fernandez of Logos Bible Baptist Church and I know it's gonna be a blessing they are a mission-minded church they support a lot of missionaries local and foreign and we're gonna have him come it's gonna be his first time to, to CHBC we're gonna warmly welcome him and uh, we have already also have on that day on the 25th 70 pastors joining us on that Friday night but I want our people to be here it's Friday say amen mark your calendar we want to encourage them we want to bless them we want to pray for them and we want our church to be encouraged to be able to support missionaries and send more people I believe this year uh, especially we want to fulfill God's purpose for our church win souls get the gospel to as many people as we can so pray for that and we'll be talked about that we're gonna raise uh, people I'm gonna ask our people to adopt at least one of the 70 uh, pastors family we're gonna prepare a family pack and see what God is going to do on that Sunday on the last Sunday of August that's the climax that's the big big day every Sunday is big day but that's the big big day because on the 29th now umaga po by God's grace and Lord willing we will finally dedicate this building to the Lord say amen and, and uh, we are praying for that uh, I believe mga brother, although uh, I know we had we're still about 80% finished but I don't want for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back that we have sacrificed and gave that we have not dedicated this place we want to dedicate this place the reason why in four weeks we are praying to finish and at least be at at least 90% of this building and so we're going to work out that 10 percent in the next four weeks i am glad for our ushers they already bought their brand new air conditioning in their office but i found out the ushers i appreciate the ushers they're trying to do that they're trying to bring in their cct cap cctv cameras we're trying to do a lot tomorrow we'll be adding more workers uh, i know it's gonna most of you doesn't know materials labor and so we're gonna bring in labor it's gonna be time soon but we always believe by faith and built this building by faith and I just encourage you just be faithful let's commit give to the Lord what we have committed and God will do miracles with that okay and that last Sunday we're gonna turn in our first fruits offering and we're praying that we reach a 3.5 million that Sunday total and so you pray and Bishop Ben Abante will be preaching for us on the morning and in the afternoon of the 29th that's our homecoming service and before i say that on the morning we'll go ha- we're going to have pastor Marty torres join us uh, when we dedicate this building and it's his 75th birthday and we're going to also be a blessing to him and recognize him and encourage him but in the afternoon it's our homecoming service again po ngayon pong gabi kung kayo po ay naging miembro at miembro ng Santa Rosa bible baptist church you have been a member of our church CHBC we want you and we invite you to come home that August 29 4 p.m. for our homecoming service we're gonna have Pastor Ramel Porter preach for us we're gonna be able mga to look back and rejoice together for what the Lord has done in our ministries in the past years and so those are the things we want you to pray work hard together and come together as we celebrate our 15th year of anniversary let's stand have your bibles open tonight and uh, it's about 17 i won't really to uh, have that i guess that we really need to start on the dot 
at 6.30 and uh, have this, but I'm thankful that you're joining us. We're still adjusting in our second service in person Wednesday night to our service. Tonight, I'd like to preach a message entitled, The Power of the Praying Church. The Power of a Praying Church. Last Sunday, I preached on a very important message, mga kapatid. If you missed that, I tell all our builders, our leaders in church, if you, have, was, you, if you were not here last Wednesday night, listen to the preaching last Wednesday night. And I'm building a, a, a message, mga kapatid, for our people to understand why we do come on Wednesday night. Why we have a service on Wednesday night. This is not just another service. This is something very important. And we, I, ako po, like sinasabi, mga kapatid, I don't want to do things sa ating church na hindi mahalaga. Okay? That's my point. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste resources. Everything we do in church is because it's not just important, it is very important. It is very necessary. Tonight, I'd like to open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 37. Acts chapter 4, verses number 23 to 37. For the sake of time, I'll be preaching just only on verse number 23 to 26. On the next seven Wednesday nights, I'll be preaching on the seven principles or seven uh, uh, the seven consequences, if you may, of a powerful church. I'm not going to preach the seven principles tonight. I'm just going to preach the first principle. Then the second Wednesday night, the second principle. Until we come to the seventh principle of a powerful church. Tonight, have your Bibles open there. Acts 4, verse 23 to 26. Join me tonight. Let's read together in your word. As we begin, verse 23, go and being let go, they went to their own company. Amen. Louder now, help me now. <clears throat> Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage? And the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against His Christ. Father, tonight, bless your word. We have come, Lord, not just to listen to you, but, Lord, to talk to you through our prayers. And I pray tonight that we understand why we're here, why we need to be here as a church praying together. And I ask, Father, you strengthen our people, not just in the knowledge of your word, but in our relationship to you through our personal and corporate prayer. So we ask, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. The power of a praying church tonight. I like to preach in five minutes, so you better listen and uh, listen carefully in this five minutes, okay? And the power of a praying church. I believe may punga that the problem really of God's churches tonight, including us, to be honest, mga kapatid, is that it is our prayer life some churches says Magabed, our problem is finances some people church our problem are leaders our, some, people, some churches our problem really Magabed, is, is, is programs and ministries and music and a lot of that but could I submit to you tonight Magabed, every problem that you might think of about what you know or what you might know in church really boils down to the problem of prayer if you realize mga kapatid, everything that's going on and in your thoughts about problems you see in churches, and let me, let me go further, mga kapatid, not just to say that, but even in your life, even in my life, it all goes down to our prayer life. In our prayer life. The real problem, mga kapatid, in the Christian life and even in God's churches is our prayer life. It is always said, mga kapatid, that it seems na mas mahirap ubatan ng Wednesday kaysa Sunday. It seems, mga kapatid, at the back of our minds, we don't say this. But really, honestly, there's a more struggler of coming to church on Wednesday than on a Sunday. If you're honest, mga kapatid, say Amen. <laughs> Mas mahirap, honestly, to if there seems to be a, a more struggle of coming to church on Wednesday night in prayer than on Sundays. And could I say also that it's more harder to come on Wednesday than Sunday night? 
Yung iba, oh, Sunday night may struggle na. The struggle is real. Lalo na sa Wednesday. But we have to realize that's the reason why there are people, and when, when, when Paul, was not many Paul in the New Testament, that there are people at church that have form of godliness, they have the form, but they don't have the power. Sabi ni Paul, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And I wonder many times, mga kapatid, how many of us, we only have form, but we do not have the power. We have the form of ministry. We have a, a, a nice form of uh, programs and buildings and ministries. But really, in those buildings and in those ministries, there is no prayer. This is why I, 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 tell, I, I talk to our church leaders, our builders. The success, if you may, or the blessings of our Sunday services... It's dependent on our prayers on Wednesday. The power of our leaders in your ministry is dependent on your personal prayer life. And I know, just like you, I struggle with that. It's more easier to stand and say something than to pray. It's more easier, if, uh, if you be honest also with me, to sing than to pray. Because the problem really of many ministries and Christians is our prayer life. Tonight I'd like to listen to just one point and we're done. This is a seven point preaching, mga kapatid. But we're going to do one every Wednesday night until we reach the seven consequences or the seven things that a powerful church experiences when we pray. In our verse tonight, in the book of Acts, and that's our text in this next Wednesday night, mga kapatid, look at verse number 23. What's your Bible's there? Verse number 23, Acts chapter number 4. Verse 23, if you're joining us in your homes. Verse number 23, the Bible says, and being led, let go. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and Elders had said to them, and when they have heard that, they lifted up their voice to God in one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. I don't know if you know the story. If you read the story in Acts chapter number 4, Makapodid, that the apostles, namely, it is, uh, it, it, it is, uh, Peter and John, sila po'y nakulong. The pastor, the leaders of the first church, they were imprisoned and they were about to be executed. Naalaman ng church na yung kanila pong church leaders were imprisoned and I'm gonna ask you, guess what did the first church do when they heard that Peter and John was in prison? Well, you know, mga kapatid, when they were in prison, the church did not sing. The church, they didn't, did not preach. The church gathered, and you know what they did? They prayed. They prayed. After Peter and John had been in prison, and they were released, mga kapatid, by the way, and then when they were released, they heard that they got them, but they prayed. And because of their prayer, they were released. Guess what? They were still praying. When the Christians heard Peter's and John's report, that sila yung nakalaya, nakatakas, pinalaya, pinatakas na pa lang sa preso, hindi sila nagkaroon ng conference, hindi sila nagkaroon ng worship service, they prayed. Let me say in the first point that we need to understand the power of a praying church because number one, every praying church recognizes the supreme importance of prayer. It is not just prayer. It is important. 
And it is not just important, it is supreme. There's a great difference, mga kapatid, when Christians think that prayer is important. But it takes on another meaning and attitude in every church. When we say, prayer is not just important, prayer is supreme. Meaning, mga kapatid, that when a praying church recognizes that prayer is supreme, it is supremely important, therefore, we develop a spontaneous desire. Ano po ang resulta na ang simbahan? Have that attitude. A church understand na ang panalangin po hindi lang mahalaga. Ito po ang pinakamahalaga. What happens? Then our desire, our worship, our attitude becomes spontaneous. Ano yung spontaneous ba? Natural. Have you realized even when we worship, pag ikaw talaga naunawaan mo yung kinakanta mo, naintindihan mo yung lyrics, bago, I don't know about you, but there are times when you, kahit lang ako sa service eh, I'm, 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 I'm listening in, while I'm studying, I'm listening to a song, parang biglang kumakagat, parang biglang kumagat yung kanta. Amen. Hindi ka lang nakikinig eh, parang, it does not just touch your ears or your emotions, it begins to touch your spirit. Alam, minsan mga kapatid ngayari, natural. Minsan naluha ka, minsan natas ang kamay mo, minsan tumitigil ka nga eh. Hindi yun inaaral. Spontaneous yun. Why? Because there is what? A desire. I guarantee you, if you're a, pray, if you're a Christian, even though you're a Christian, you do not pray, you don't have a prayer life, and your prayer life is just shallow. Listen, mga kapatid, everything you do in the spiritual life, it's not spontaneous. Parang laging pigil. Parang laging pigil. Where do you get that spontaneous, spontaneous reaction in spiritual life? You get that in prayer. When our leaders doesn't pray, when our leaders doesn't pray for your ministry, for our children, for our people, for, our, for everything we do, then the ministry just becomes a program. But when we have praying people and spiritual people, leaders praying, then our ministries become spontaneous. And as we said tonight, it's very important that we understand that if we're going to have a powerful ministry, a powerful life, a powerful effect on the people we minister, then we must understand that prayer is not just important, it is supreme. In closing tonight, let me give you a statement that I hope tonight you understand and you remember. And I believe this, that the real problem is the prayer life of the church. Because many believe prayer is just supplemental. It is not fundamental. I believe tonight that the reason why there are things in our Christian life, when we think about projects and giving and serving and ministry and even coming to church, we are burdened. There's no desire. You know why? Because our prayer life is just supplemental. But it is not fundamental. Last Wednesday night, we made a statement. Our preaching, our teaching, and our reaching is based only on our prayer. There is no preaching when there's no prayer. There's no powerful teaching when there's no prayer. There's no reaching effectively when there's no prayer. It means, mga kapatid, if we are reaching, if we are teaching, if we are preaching without prayer, we are just doing that on the ability and the power of ourselves. And yet the Bible says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. That's the reason why prayer is not just important. It is supreme. Stand together, head bowed, eye closed tonight.
as we go to our prayer time and go to our divided services, prayer service. But before we do that tonight, as the piano plays us up in your homes, I hope tonight that you understand, my beloved, that it's one thing to pray privately. It's one thing to pray personally. But there's power of praying together. There's power of praying together as a church. That there are things that one prayer cannot do. But there are many things that when a church comes together, God's power breaks through. Tonight, maybe just tonight before we go to our rooms. You just need to come and bend the knee and wherever you are in your seat. Panginoon, I don't want to make the, my prayer life supplemental. I want to make it fundamental in my life tonight. I'm not just going to make it just part of my life. I'm going to make prayer my life. Prayer is not just a part of us. Prayer should be our life. I want our church moment to understand tonight. If we do ministry, if we come to church, serve, if we grow without prayer, then Magabuled, we know very well it's just our own and our power. We have just the form of godliness, but we don't have the power. Are you going to ask? Do you have power in your life? You have power in your life. You have power in your ministry. You have power in your Christian life. Christian walk. They need to re-examine re- said, How's your prayer life? Is it fundamental? Or it is just supplemental to your life? God spoke to you tonight. As you've been in talk to God. God bless you. Head bowed, eye closed. All of you on the balcony, thank God for our choir, our worship team, our instrumentalists. Those of you in the balcony, God bless you. In the front, God bless you. At the back, God bless you. Lord, tonight, I'm going to make it that prayer is fundamental to my Christian life. It's not going to be supplemental. Prayer is not just going to be part of my life. Prayer will be my life. That's you. You come. God bless you all across this building tonight. Thank God for Wednesday night. Thank God for our people recognizing the importance and the supreme importance of prayer tonight. You come together. God bless you. Head bowed, eye closed. If you're finished, just stand. Just stand. We're going to pray together tonight. And we'll be dismissed to our prayer class and our divided services. But before we do that, let me pray. Father, tonight I pray. Bless Lord, now our church, our programs, our anniversaries, our ministries. But Lord, more than the things we do, the things we have, I pray, Panginoon, you bless the people leading our ministries and our services and our teaching, our preaching, our reaching. Lord, I pray, Panginoon, that every builder of our church, every member of our church would make prayer fundamental in their personal life as we make it supreme important in our church life. And I pray tonight for every burdens and every need that we be prayed for. We know, Panginoon, you're a powerful God. I pray tonight, help us as we continue service in our divided session. We ask, in Jesus' name I pray. Well, amen. Let's sing that song before we divide. I love the Lord. He heard my cry, lifted me way up high, set my feet on high ground. Sing with us. And we're going to divide. Rose point up. Prayer leaders, get ready to your places. And we're going to make our people go there after this song. See the song. I have seen a valley. I was sinking low. I have slipped and fallen. I have missed the goal. If you bear the burden, if you bear the burden, 
of our sin scarred life as mistakes and failures haunt you in the night. You can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. For God's word is Amen. on the wings. On the wings of eagles, you can see it too. I love the Lord, you heard me cry. He lifts in me way up high, sets my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord the King. Just think of it, the Lord the King, the Creator of everything, loves me with a love. That won't stop. Just think of it, the Lord the King. Just think of it, the Lord the King, the Creator of everything. Love, Spirit, I love. That won't stop. Well, Amen. You're divided to your rooms. I'm going to encourage all our adults. Please stay in this auditorium, starting from the working singles above. Please come forward, move all young people. You may go down to the first floor, our college, our high school for your prayer time. I'm going to ask all 12 years old below to move up to the back, to the third floor as you go to your prayer time. Those of you in your homes, God bless you. We hope to see you this coming Sunday at 9 o'clock. We want to see you in our church facility, especially our church people. Join us in prayer. And tonight, we want to say that we are thankful that you joined us tonight. God bless you and good night.